wanted to tell you guys about my makeup look for today. <gasps> so I think I told you guys before that I went out with my best friend today. And we hung out for like mostly the whole day. I s met him at like 1245 and we hung out till about like 9 o'clock. Um, cause we wanted to go to this brunch spot that he's been wanting to take me to. It's called Crazy Beans and oh my god, it was so good. We actually both got two of the specials because they had bacon stuffed French toast, which is basically just like a French toast sandwich with bacon in between. It wasn't really like stuffed into the French toast, but it was so good and he got the strawberry shortcake pancakes, and those were bomb too. So they were both really, really good. Um, and then we got a side of scrambled eggs and a side of home fries. So good. I should have gotten probably like a full side of bacon as well, but honestly, that would have been way too much. And we say we're going to share. Oh, sorry. The mode change. Sometimes it does that. Um, on my light uh that was a little weird but um we end up like being too full and just eat our own I ate most of mine I was almost done but I just gave him like the last like quarter of the the other half because honestly mine wasn't like too big because like some of them are like huge portions of some of the things that you can order they were so good and then we walked down to like the beach lake area and we just sat there looking at the water and watching everybody walk their dogs and their duck and the ducks in the um and they're walking their ducks, right? <laughs> the ducks in the lake and you know, the seagulls and the birds and everything. It was really, really nice just sitting there. It was such a nice day today. It was like the perfect weather. It was a tad bit uh, windy, but it was still warm enough outside that it wasn't, like, cold, and it was so nice. It was just, just teetering, um, around 70 degrees, and it was so nice out, and then we wanted to go back up and check out this tea place because they have an afternoon tea spot there, and I was like, I want to go there, but they closed at, like, I think they stop accepting tables at like 3.30, even though they close at 4. And we got back up there at 3.40 and they were already closed. So I'm like, no. So we decided to go to the bakery across the street, but it looked like they were like cleaned out for the day and they didn't really have anything that we really, really wanted. So then we just walked back up to what other restaurants were around there, but we decided that we wanted to go see... Um, we already knew we were going to go see this movie, but we decided to go to the 5 o'clock showing because we didn't want it to be over too late. And also, we wanted it to be over early enough so we could go get food afterwards because we were so full from the uh, food from the brunch place that we decided to eat after the movie. So, we saw this movie called I Saw the TV Glow. Oh my god, what a crazy movie. It's a new A24 movie. It was good though. I really liked it. I would give it an 8 out of 10. It was a great movie. Maybe not something I would watch again, but I, it was still so good. So it really makes you think. So, And then um, we actually decided to go to the hibachi place that's in that strip next to the movie theater because we've never went there before. We go to the Chili's like all the time and then we go to Fat Boy's Burrito which is like across the street from there. We've been going there every time we see a movie over there. But we finally decided to try this place even though we've been going to this movie theater for almost like two years at this point. I was like, can we finally try the hibachi place next to it? I was like, let's just go there and get a drink. So <coughs> it was actually really, <coughs> really good. Jesus, why am I dying? So let me tell you guys finally about my makeup look. So I primed my eyes with the Anastasia Eye Primer and then I used the Clarins Lip Oil and then I set my eyes with the um, Urban Decay Press Powder. And then for my eyeshadow palette today, I went into the Cint Citrus Punch Palette from Simply Posh Cosmetics. My look was really, really pretty, but honestly, before I even left, it was like creasing here. I really don't think it's the palettes that I'm using, honestly. I think it's just... My eyes have gotten, like, so sensitive, I feel like, to some eyeshadow 
formula is that it just ends up like starting to crease for some reason but also like since it was windy outside but it was already like creasing inside at the brunch place and it was like already creasing in my outer corner area even though I went over it a couple times before I left for some reason it creased and I was like what the fuck like but honestly, this didn't look as bad at the end of the day. I mean, it still creased quite a bit. It didn't, like, come off completely like the Cosmic Brushes one did. I don't know why. For some reason, I'm having problems with two of my favorite palettes last year. Because I love this palette and I love the way it blends. But for some reason, the last time I used the Cosmic Brushes palette... It was not as vibrant as I remember. Maybe I really just do need to clean my brushes more often because I just find it's like for some reason my eyeshadow is creasing so much easy more easily now. I don't know why. So anyway, I went in with Quench in the crease. Then I darkened up the crease more with Grapefruit. And then I used Blood Orange on the outer corners. And then for the lid, I went into Flavorful. And then for the inner corners, I went into Sour because I wanted a little bit of green on the lower lash line. And I love this shade so much. It's such a beautiful, like, duochrome pinky green. And then for my waterline, I went into ColourPop Cosmetics Cream Gel Liner in the shade Aglow. Um, so that's everything I used from the palette. But I don't know why it did that. Like, when I'm working that doesn't happen. So I really, I guess it's just because, like, I'm outside in a different climate I don't really know because it's like warmer and you're by the water there I really have no idea that was like the same thing that happened to me in the other town we went to last time we were outside for quite a bit in the wind so this is the shade of glow from ColourPop that I used on the waterline like I said and then I used the essence lash primer on my top lash essence primer on my top lashes of course um, and then I used the Benefit Fan Fest Mascara on my top lashes and then the Maybelline Lash Discovery on my bottom lashes. I'm so tired though. Like we had such a long day, but it was so nice. And then I primed my face with the Do It Spray and the e.l.f. Liquid uh, Putty Primer. But I wanted to do like some things with my friends this weekend because I'm working all day tomorrow and I worked all day yesterday. So today we sp I spent a lot of time with my best friend because we knew we were wanted to go to brunch. Basically, we just went to brunch, looked at the water, and then went to a movie and went to dinner, which is usually what we do anyway, but we just added br brunch in the mix, but it was still great. It was so much fun. And then for my foundation, I went into the Lancome Taint Idol Ultra Wear Foundation in the shade 120N. And then for my concealer, I went into the Tarte C Concealer in the shade Porcelain 8S. 8S Porcelain Sand, not porcelain 8s i'm so tired and then i set my under eyes with the uh pat mcgrath labs powder and then i set my face with the urban decay press powder my face makeup looked pretty good like my base looked great because i know the lancome one always never does me wrong um and then for my bronzer i went into the house labs bronzer in the shade light level one and then for my blush which again i should have cleaned my blush brushes but i just went into the strawberry blush that I got like a couple of years ago from the strawberry collection that ColourPop did quite a while back and it's in the shade Seed You Later. It's such a beautiful like hot pink blush and I want to start wearing like more my hot pink loud blushes because it's the spring and summer times. So that's when I love pulling them out and then for my highlight I just went into my Odin's Eye highlighter in the shade Pink Star and then I set my face with the Milk Makeup Setting Spray and then I set my uh brows with the elf wow brow and then for my lips i went into the ColourPop lip liner in the shade brink i really want to get into bed soon because i'm going to try and finish the book that i'm reading it says i only have two hours left so i'm just going to finish that tonight I'm just take this out of my bag those are my pills um where is my lippy and then i just went into the house labs lippy in the shade um um rose shine um so that's everything i use as far as my makeup goes and then as far as a reading update goes i'm still reading um the paradise problem by christina loren but i am going to finish it tonight i'm on page 241 um i read like 
50-ish pages today, actually. I think I got up to page 180 last night. So almost 60 pages, actually. So it's not bad um, for being out all day. That's actually pretty good. I actually ended up reading a couple of times in my car when um, I was waiting for him to... And also I read a little bit when we were like on the water. Um, but so far I'm really enjoying it. It's really fun. And I just know when I read Christina Loren, I'm going to read a good romance novel. They're best-selling, New York Times best-selling authors for a reason. Their books are just a fun time. And even though in this one, even though I felt like with the Unhoneymooners and Love and Other Words, it wasn't like as, especially the Unhoneymooners was more of like a romantic comedy kind of book. This one still has like a bit of trauma um, regarding like the two main characters because I feel like, you know, a lot of people say this about like their complaints about some romance books is that these two people can't be in love or the two main characters can't be like real characters unless they go through like a bunch of parental issues or problems or like an absentee parent or something like that. But I feel like with Christina Loren, they just, they, the kids have, the two main characters have problems, but it's not like the center of the story like, they're still, like, building up to the romance, and then the romance happens, like, 200 pages in, you know? But they still, like, it was definitely a lot less of a slow burn than yours truly, and that fake dating trope, like, they don't kiss until, like, 300 pages into yours truly, and this, they kiss, like, they're fake kissing because they're fake uh, married, but... Now the question is, uh, is whether or not they're going to stay to stay married or what's going to happen because they fall in love f being fake married. So like being married is a whole different issue um, than like in yours truly when they were fake dating. Like there's just boyfriend and girlfriend or I think they're like fake engaged, but they're not married. But as soon as like you're faking being in love with your husband or wife... Are you going to stay married to date each other while you're married and then you end up divorcing? Or are you going to divorce and then start, you know, dating? Like, I don't know. It's That's why it's called the paradise problem because do they say married or not? So I'm very, very intrigued to find out. So yeah, that's it. Bye. Okay, so hey there guys, I want to tell you guys about my makeup look for today. I did work another 12 to 8 shift today. Very, very tired. Um, I didn't really sleep the greatest last night, excuse me. Um, even though I was like friggin' exhausted from like hanging out with my friend. Um, I don't remember if I, I think I did tell you guys everything that we did yesterday. So yeah, I just worked today. So I primed my eyes with the Anastasia eye primer and then I used the Clarins lip oil and then I set my eyes with the... Do our pressed powder. And then for my eyeshadow palette today, I decided to go into an oldie but a goodie. I used the Natasha Denona Sunrise palette. I don't think I've even touched this palette this year. Um, and I don't know. I've just been wanting to use more Natasha Denona lately. So just decided to use this. So I went into Morning in the Crease. Then I darkened up the crease more with Morgan. And then I used Jasper on the outer corners. And then for all over the lid, I just went into the shade Agate. It's one of the, like, most beautiful gold shimmery shades. I have such big dents in both of these because, like, I love using these two because they're, they're such a nice, like, creamy formula. I don't know what it is. They're, these are really good shimmers in here. Like, they're more subtle. Like, they're not super shiny like some of her other shimmers are and, like, her updated palettes. And I don't know why people didn't love this palette because I love it still. It still performs great. It's still one of my favorite Natasha Denona palettes. I love this one way more than the I Need a Nude palette. It was just so unique during the time. And then for the inner corners, I went into the shade Laurel. I love this palette. It's just so much fun with the... I really have to do another look with the yellow and the pink. I think that would be really, really pretty. So I might whip this palette out soon. 
like maybe within the next couple of weeks we'll see um and then i went into brighter days from blend bunny on the brow bone and then for my <sighs> waterline i went into the makeup by mario excuse me lighter in the shade uh soft brown and then i just went into the essence lash primer and then i just went into the same mascara as yesterday which is the benefit fan fest and then i went into the uh maybelline lash discovery on the bottom lashes as always and then i primed my face with the do it spray and the elf liquid poreless putty primer and then for my foundation i just went into my tom forge traceless stick foundation again um, in the shade 0, 0.0 pearl and it really does wear off my nose by like the end of the day and it kind of creased over here today which usually doesn't happen but like I don't know why it did that it still looked pretty good by the end of the day like it doesn't wear terribly but I don't know why it creased in my smile lines that badly because I usually don't have that issue so I don't know I just felt like using it today and then for my concealer I went into the stay naked uh, Quickie Concealer from Urban Decay in the shade 10NN, and then I set my under eyes with the Pat McGrath Labs powder. Sorry, and then I set my face with the Dior powder, and then for my bronzer, I just went into my Gucci bronzer in the shade 01. I would have had my makeup on still, but my mom wanted to watch Bridgerton when I got home, and I had to do some laundry when I got home, so... Didn't end up having my makeup off on anymore. I wanted to rip it off when I came home because I was just so tired. And I just wanted to sit and watch the show. Um, and then for my blush, I went into the Giorgio Armani blush in the shade uh, 30, which is like the apricot shade. I love this one and I just felt like using it today. And then for my highlight, I went into the Fenty Beauty Highlighting Duo in... Uh, Excuse me, Mean Money and Hustla Baby. This one's really pretty. It's such a pretty, like, warmer tone highlighter for, like, the summertime. And then I set my face with the Milk Makeup Setting Spray. And then I set my brows with the Elf Wow Brow. And then for my lips, I'm not even sure. Oh, here's my lippy. For my lippy, I need to change my purse. Like, I've just been using this purse for way too long. But, like, I never have, like, a moment... <laughs> where I want to do something other than read, like I'm reading like all the time, so yeah. And then I, for my lipstick, I went into the Gucci Lippy in the shade, um, what shade is this? They make the font so ridiculously small. Katrine Sand, this is one of the like cream finishes, but this one's a really beautiful shade, so I just felt like using that. I've used this one a ton, I love it so much. So that's everything as far as my makeup goes. And then as far as a reading update goes, I did finish The Paradise Problem by Christina Loren last night. Well, actually, I finished it this morning because I couldn't stay up to finish it last night. I got up to page, like, 295, and I only had, like, less than 40 pages left. I think it was, like, 338 pages. So I was trying to finish it, but I was just falling asleep. And then, of course, I couldn't fall asleep until, like, I think I didn't fall back asleep until like 8 in the morning and then I had to wake up at 10.30. So I think I only got like two hours of sleep this morning. But I finished the book this morning. Um, so I finished the last 40 pages because I was like, well, I can't sleep. Might as well finish the book. And I liked it. It was good. I gave it a solid four stars. I don't feel like I want to give it any higher than that. I had a feeling it wasn't going to be a five star, but also like I still really enjoyed it. It's still really good. Christina Loren just know, they know how to write romance novels and I know I'm going to have a good time whenever I read their books. So I really enjoyed it. This was now my fourth Christina Loren book. I've read um, Love and Other Words, The Unhoneymooners, and I listened to the sequel of The Unhoneymooners, which is The Honeymoon Crashers. And that was really cute too. So this is my first Christina Loren book this year, but I really wanted to read their 2024 release and it had just come out like a couple of days ago and it was really cute I really liked it um so then like I said I was gonna go into Abby Jimenez's Just for the Summer next this is the third book in the Part of Your World series which is the Interconnected Standalone series the first book is Part of Your World and the second book is Yours Truly and I've read both of those already this month 
And I just couldn't wait to see more of uh, this world. And also, I just, I love her writing so much. I started this at work today and I'm already on page 107. Like, I had a lot of reading time after, like, my coworker left. I read, um, like, 30 pages when I first started reading it today. And then I got up to page, like, 40 on my break. I only read, like, 10 pages then. And then um, I read another, like, 60-something pages. She just, like, her books are so easy to get through. And I don't know, just, like, her characters' stories and the romance and also the way that she just, I don't know, it's just, I just love her writing so much. I enjoy it so much, even more so than Emily Henry, even more so than Christina Loren. I love Ashley Poston, but honestly, like, Abby Jimenez has just been my favorite author this month, and I'm just eating up her books. I think that this is so good so far. I've heard some mixed things, but overall, the thing, the reason why I still really love Abby Jimenez is that the romance is always such a beautiful story, even though people said that this is supposed to be kind of sad, but, you know, I cried in part of your world and yours truly, so, but, like, it's not, like, where the characters have, like, so many problems that, like, you feel like it's just a sob story and it's not enough romance. I feel like everything that she says about her characters makes them so real, and there, this one is way sadder already like the two characters have very sad uh childhoods and you know parents but like part of your world and yours truly was not as heavy as this one is going to be I feel like but I feel like I'm still gonna love this like both of those books were five star reads for me part of your world and yours truly so I feel like this might be this might be my last five star this month um, but I've just been really wanting to read a lot of 2024 releases this month. So I can, you know, get in the, the know, read what everybody else is reading right now. It's just like a fun, like, universal feeling when you're reading books that everybody else is reading when it comes out. I haven't done that in such a long time. Not since, like, Harry Potter came out. So you don't want to, like, it's not like a FOMO. You just want to feel like part of, like, the... I don't know, like, the the community of reading the same book, like, at the same time. Like, even though this book came out in April, like, it's still a much more recent release. And then after this, I'm going to go into Holly Jackson's The Reappearance of Rebel Price because I've been reading a lot of romances lately, but I have been enjoying them so much. I'm still not sick of them. I'm still in my romance era this month. Um, but I really do want to read a thriller, at least one thriller this month, and people said that this is, like, probably one of her best books, so I'm super excited to read that, but I feel like I'm going to eat this up, and I'm probably going to finish this by, like, Wednesday afternoon, hopefully tomorrow night. I'm going to try and get at least halfway through tonight because I'm just eating this up, so yeah, that's it. Bye! Hey there guys, I wanted to tell you guys about my makeup look for today. I think this is a new lookbook video, I'm not really sure. I don't even keep track anymore at this point. It's so bad, I'm so bad, but I'm so excited to tell you guys about my look today because actually a new collection came in the mail today that I was super excited to get and I did have to order this because I was freaking out about it. So, um... I just used my Kofi concealer all over my face today because I actually had to get ready in kind of a rush because, um, that's, I would have said my makeup look before I left, but I actually had to go to the mall for my brother first so I could go pick up a couple of shirts for him at a store called Brooks Brothers. I don't know if you guys know what that is, um, but they have like a few locations, I think in New York. I think they're a New York company. Well, obviously, because I live in New York, duh. But, um, then they have a few locations, locations here. Why can't I speak? I'm very tired. <laughs> I didn't sleep the greatest last night either. Um, but I went to see my boyfriend today, but I had to stop by the mall first. But also, like, 
I actually tried on a few things at my store yesterday and I wasn't sure if I was going to go pick them up today. But then since my brother was like, can you please go get these shirts for me? Because um, I have to go buy them because um, Brooks Brothers is actually a partner brand with Lucky Brand. So we actually get employee discounts there too. And they were doing 70% off for employees. But the sale ended today. I was like, you couldn't tell me yesterday when I was working, but it's fine. So anyway, I went into the Kofi concealer in the shade Bad Batum. And then I had to go pick up Bud and also like food for me and my boyfriend. So I wanted to get out of the house before 3 o'clock. Because like anytime after 3, the road that I take to his house gets so busy. Because it's one of the most used roads on Long Island. It gets extremely busy, so, um, but, like, there's so much on that road, so, but I had to go to the mall, then go get gas, and then go into his town and get everything else, so, yeah, it was a pain in the ass. Um, so I just went into the Kofi concealer, and then I set my under eyes with the House Labs powder, and then I set my face with the ColourPop Pretty Fresh powder, and I also used the concealer as, um, my eye primer and then for my eyeshadow palette today this actually came super early today i thought it was gonna you know be super late by the time it came or i thought it was gonna come after i left the house because usually our mail comes around like three o'clock but this came around like one o'clock today and i was so excited so i could use it before i left so i went into the brand new ColourPop and pokemon palette Look at how freaking adorable this is. I didn't do a first impressions today because I felt like I didn't have time. But I'm definitely going to wear it tomorrow and do like a full first impressions on it. But I love this packaging. I couldn't get over how good the packaging was on this. Like, I swear ColourPop just really improves on their packaging every single time they come out with a collection. But look at this. Like, isn't it so cute with all the different Pokemon on top? But I was such a Pokemon fan growing up. So I wanted to use this today. So I actually went into the pink tones today because I wore like a baby pink shirt like you saw in the clip before. Tomorrow I want to use the blue. So I'm probably just going to use like this row. This blue is a little dark for what I wanted to wear tomorrow. But these blues are going to be really pretty. So I'm going to use those tomorrow in my video. But, like, I just wish there was a couple more matte shades in here because people are saying it is a rainbow palette. But, honestly, it's kind of more like a muted rainbow because there's no orange in this palette, actually. It's, like, this shimmery orange, but there's no, like, vibrant, like, matte orange, which I would have been excited for because, like, they put, like, this gray in here, but then, like, it doesn't really go with much. But at least they put a couple of neutrals in here so they go with most of these other shades. But I don't know. I think it's going to be pretty easy to create looks with this. I might pull in some other mattes from ColourPop to create more looks. But it was just, this was really nice to use today. I think this is actually even better quality than the Beauty and the Beast palette. Because I thought the mattes blended a little bit better with this and were a little bit less powdery. This baby pink actually showed up really beautifully in my crease. So I went into this shade... Pokemon Center in the crease and then I took Fuchsia City to define the the crease and I also took it took it on my outer corners because I wanted to use both of those shades and then for my lid I went into the shade Gym Leader and this is such a beautiful like super glittery pinky shade it is so pretty on the lids it has like a bunch of different like multi glitters in it it's so pretty I just have to swatch it, but, like, you can't even really see, like, on camera. But in person, it has so many different, like, multicolored glitters in it. It was so pretty, and it went on the lid so well. And then for my inner corners, I went into this shade Jelly Donut. I thought that this one was going to be a little bit more, like, kind of, like, similar to the shade in the, um... Beauty and the Beast palette that I love so much that I put on my inner corners. It, like, really pops on the inner corners. It's, like, the lightest shade. I forget what it's called. I think it's called, like, New Transformation or something. Vivid Imagination. It's such a beautiful, like, super shimmery, like, ivory shimmer. So I thought that this was going to be similar because I think I've told you guys that I love ColourPop shimmers so much. This is getting a little bit heavy to hold. 
Um, but this one was a bit drier than I thought, but it still looked really pretty. It was like a really pretty like duochrome pinky whitish shade. Very, very pretty. So, so far I'm really enjoying it. I also wish they would have put like a red in here for the, the like Pokeball shade. It's so cute though that that's the one that has the Pokeball imprint on it. But I think I'm still really going to enjoy this. And I actually have never really gotten like a full on rainbow palette before actually because but I feel like this is like such a well executed collection. I think they did such a good job with this palette. So I'm really excited to have this and you know way for them to come out with two collections that caught my eye because honestly the only other palette that I got from them this year was the Golden Sun palette and I've used that palette so much. It's become like one of my favorite neutral palettes, but the two collabs that they came out with, I could not say no to. I didn't get the entire collection, but I did get a substantial amount of products from the collection. Um, and then I went into Brighter Days from Blend Bunny on the brow bone. And then for my waterline, I just went into the LA Girl liner in the shade white. This is blinding me. Um, and then for my mascara, I just went into the ColourPop Lengthening Mascara. On the top and bottom lashes, this light is giving me a headache. It's, like, way too bright. Okay, that's better. Um, and then for my um, face, for the rest of my face makeup, I went into the ColourPop Stick Bronzer because I wanted to use a cream product today for the blush that I was going into. So I just went into the shade Laguna Beach. And also, I haven't used this in a little while, so I wanted to use it today. And then for my blush, I went into one of the blushes from the Pokemon collection. And this is the, one of the cream blushes, which actually I've also not, have not tried the cream blush formula from ColourPop. And I'm so excited that they had the cream blushes in this collection. Um, so I could have the opportunity to try them. So this is the shade Metronome. And this is so cute because it has Clefairy on it. Like, everyone was so happy that they featured Clefairy like this. And then they also have, like, the Pokemon, pink Pokemon on it. How cute is that? And this is a really pretty pinky shade. I think it applied really nicely. It wasn't really that patchy. It's definitely more lightly pigment th pigmented, though, than some of my other cream blushes that I own. But I think it works really nicely for every day. I didn't really have any issues with it. It applied pretty nicely. Um, but I've seen like mixed reviews on them that they're kind of sheer, but I thought it gave a really pretty hint of color. So it wasn't sh too sheer, you know? Um, and then for my highlight, I just went into my Brighter Days palette because I went, I'm not Brighter Days palette, forget me not palette. I basically should call it Brighter Days because this is the shade that I use every day on my brow bone. Do you see how much pan I have in it? But I literally, like, don't touch the other shades. I just use this shade and I use the highlighters, like, all the time. Because the highlighters in here are absolutely stunning. But I just keep this next to me just in case if I need to add, like, any definition to, like, a palette that I already have. That doesn't have, like, a defining or darkening shade in it. But I don't know. I just feel like I don't really need this palette too often. But I use these highlighters constantly, so I just went into the shade Butterflies because it's such... These highlighters are so beautiful and intense, like I can always count on them to be um, super blinding. I also went into the lip mask today because I wanted to use it for, like, you know, moisturizing my lips before I... Or nourishing my lips before I went into... Um, well, actually, I wasn't going to at first because I was going to use, well, I'll show you what I used in a minute. But uh, the annoying thing about this is that you do have to screw the top on normally or like a certain way in order for the Pokeball to line up. But I couldn't resist getting this. Look how adorable this is. So I got this one and then I also got the Enchanted Rose one from the, uh, the way that they package the, from the Beauty and the Beast collection, the way that they package these lip masks makes me such a sucker for them. And I know that's exactly why they do it. But look how cute they are with the little rose. Like, 
but this pokeball is so adorable like i could take this everywhere with me and it, like it's just so cute and i could just throw it on like all the time but i don't find that you know lip masks are the most sanitary thing to use when you're out in public because you use your finger to apply it but i'm probably going to use this a shit ton when i'm getting ready i actually think i like this one more than the Beauty and the Beast one because this one is cotton candy scented and I feel like the the taste is not as potent but it smells so good. The rose one is a little bit more like soapy tasting because it's like a rose scent but this one doesn't bother me at all. It felt so nice on the lips but I also feel like this one's a bit more nourishing than the Beauty and the Beast one. I feel like some of the lip masks, the masks the lip masks aren't made the same sometimes. I don't know why. But look how cute it is in the packaging. Like, are you kidding me? With the little Pokeballs. And then I set my face with the Rare Beauty setting spray. Because I wanted to go in with that today. Just to keep it lighter. And then I set my brows with the ColourPop Brow Blush Gel. Oh, oh, before I forget, I actually did put a primer on before I did my concealer. Because you remember how I said last time when I wore just concealer, my face felt a little bit dry. I don't know if I said that in my Everyday Makeup Lookbook video or in the Everyday Get Ready With Me that I did that I still need to post. I'm so slacking on posting videos lately, you guys. But we'll get there. So I did go in with a primer today just to have a bit more hydration on my face so I just went into the do it spray and then I went into the rare beauty illuminating primer and then for my lips I went into one of the glosses that I got from the collection where is the set I know I had it oh it's right in front of me duh so I did get the EV uh Gloss Trio, the Ultra Glossy Lip Trio. I had to get this because Eevee's one of my all-time favorite Pokemon. I wish that they had the base Eevee as well because then they could have done like a cute like brownish kind of shimmery gloss or they could have done like just a regular gloss, not a glittery one. But I'm just so happy that they featured Eevee like this because look at the tops of these. These are so freaking cute. And, like, I needed another gloss, like, a hole in the head, but it has Eevee's. Oh, my God. They're just so cute. They have Eevee's um, Vampurion, Firestone, and uh, Thunderstorm. This is Electron. Why can't I remember what the fire one is called? But I really love them. Like, look, I haven't watched the show in a really long time, but I went into the yellowish shade today because this had a little bit of, like, a pinky hue to it so i went into this shade and it's called thunderstone like i just said and they're all just so cute but 99 percent of the time i'm just gonna leave this on display so because i don't really use the glosses too much but i had to get this because i absolutely love uh eevee way too much that i couldn't not get it so yeah that is everything that i use as far as my makeup goes i was trying to get one of the ph lip balms as well and i would have totally used that today because it would have went so well with my uh pink look but those were like the first things that actually sold out of the collection those ph lip balms sold out in like less than five minutes but i got the rest of the stuff pretty quickly um but that was the only thing that sold out in my cart before i checked out like i couldn't even get it um, but I got everything else that I wanted. I just really wanted the palette mostly and the Pokeball and the two blushes. Like if these sold out, I mean, if this sold out, this wouldn't have been the end of the world. I'm sure they would have restocked it, but I was just happy to get what I mostly wanted. I'm not going to order the, the pH lip balm, um, because there's like literally nothing else that I want to get on ColourPop's website right now. So like I'll just wait when like I want to make another order at some point and we'll see if I even want it at that point. And then as far as a reading update goes, I'm still reading Abby Jimenez's Just, just for the Summer. But I did tell you guys I just started this yesterday. Just for the Summer and I just started. <laughs> and I'm already on page 255, I believe. No, 257. Um, I could not put this down last night and I read like 50-ish pages today. Um, so I almost got halfway through last night. I was almost on page 200, but I started falling asleep. 
Um, but I read almost another 100 pages last night. I read like 90-something pages, but I just eat her books up. Again, they're so easy to read, so I think I'm going to finish it tonight because I really just want to know what happens, and I just want to finish more books this month before this month is over, but also like, again, this book is so easy to read, and I just really want to know what happens between the two characters. I just love her story so much. So I can't wait. I'm going to go read now. So yeah, that's it. Bye. Okay, so hey there, guys. I want to tell you guys about my makeup look for today. I'm actually super impressed with the longevity of this eyeshadow look. I think it looks so good still. I'm glad that it lasted this long. This is like one of the best long, longest lasting looks that I've done in a while and I think it's because of this palette. So I primed my eyes with the Anastasia eye primer and then I used the Pokey lip mask again because it's just so cute, the Pokeball lip mask. And then I set my eyes with the Urban Decay pressed powder. I went out with my friends today and we went to um, Barnes & Noble actually. I actually picked up two other books. Um, I don't know if I should show you guys. I probably should. I don't know why I didn't pick those up before this. I just put them right in my shelf. Didn't decide to actually show them to you guys. Um, but since my one of my friends picked up to a book that I recommended to her, I wanted to pick up um, something that she recommended to me. That's why we went to the bookstore. So I'm like, you know what? She'll give me a good book recommendation. And I'm kind of looking for some fantasy dark romance because like I've been really wanting to get into that. But she said that these aren't too dark, but they are pretty spicy. You guys know I don't care about spice. I just want something a little bit darker. And she said that this is a really good series. She really likes it. So I picked up Neon Gods by Katie Robert. So I picked up the first and just the second book because depends on when I get to these, but I think that these are going to be really fun. I think I might put these on my July TBR at least, try and get to these then because I already have like my June TBR pretty much planned out, but I think that these will be fun. I think that these will be fast, easy reads. They're only like 380 pages each. So those won't really take that long to get through. So yeah, I just decided to pick up the first two books. And depending on how much I like it, I might just continue them on um, on Kindle. But yeah, I thought that those would be fun to pick up. I'm like, you know what? I kind of want to pick up some dark romance. So I'm glad that she recommended those to me. And I feel like she would give me good ones because she really likes dark romance and she likes fantasy and she likes romance those are pretty much much like the three uh genres that she likes reading the most i am a fantasy thriller slash romance girl like those are my genres that i really like reading so anyway um so i went like i said i went into the pokemon color pop palette again today and like i said i wanted to use the blues and i filmed a full look on this look that I did because I said I was gonna film with it today and like I said I mostly just used the blues so I just went into the shade Cerulean City and it's such a beautiful deep nice turquoise vibrant turquoise shade and then I went to I went into um SS Anne, which is just a really pretty blue as well to define the crease and then for the lid I went into Evolution, which is a really beautiful, like, shimmery sky blue. And then for the inner corners, I wanted to use Vermilion City. Vermilion City, I mean. And it's, like, a really pretty, like, orangey shade. So, yeah, so far, I really have been enjoying it. I don't know if I'm going to do my makeup tomorrow because I might not go anywhere. I have just really needed a day where I just don't do frigging anything because... I have to see my boyfriend on Friday, and then I'm working on Saturday and Sunday, and I'm probably going to see him on Monday, too. And then, I don't know, I might go to the movies on Tuesday night, and then I might finally have a day to myself on Wednesday. So, I might just not go anywhere tomorrow, because I've been doing a lot with friends and working a lot. So, I might just not go anywhere. And then, 
For my liner, I went into the ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in the shade Crystal City. And then for my mascara, I went into the Essence Lash Primer, and then I just went into the Amico Lay Mascara. So I haven't used it in a little while, so I wanted to use it today. And then I just went into Brighter Days from Blend Bunny, of course, on the brow bone. And then I went into the Maybelline Lash Discovery on the bottom lashes. But yeah, I think that this look looks so pretty, right? I loved it. What a good look. And then I primed my face with the, uh, my just my makeup looked so good today. I was really impressed that I finally had a good makeup day. Um, I went into the Do It Spray, and then I went into the e.l.f. Liquid Poreless Putty Primer. And then for my foundation, I love this foundation. I went into the Glossier Foundation in the shade Very Light. It's just such a good one. And then for my uh, concealer, I went into my Tarte Concealer again in the shade 8S Porcelain Sand. Um, I, I feel like I just used this like two days ago, but I wanted to use it again. It's just my tried and true. And then I set my under eyes with the Pat McGrath Labs powder, and then I set my face with the Urban Decay Press powder. And then for my bronzer, I went into my House Labs bronzer again in the shade Light Level 1. And then for my blush, um, I went into the Pikachu blush, and actually this blush lasted really well. Um, despite being a cream blush, I think it actually lasted really well, and it was really pigmented, and I really, really liked it. It's like a really pretty, like, reddish orangey shade, and this is the shade Electro Ball. I was actually really impressed with this cream blush from ColourPop, so I guess they improved the formula. So, that's the thing about ColourPop, is that usually they work on their formulas if people weren't actually happy with them, because... Maybe they actually want to listen to people and, and make and improve the formula. And then for my highlight, I just went into Apparition from the Blend Bunny Noctilucent palette, of course. Because I always know it's going to look like this by the end of the night. Like, look how vibrant that is still. Like, are you joking? Ugh, I love these highlighters so much. And then I set my face with the Milk Makeup Setting Spray. And then I set my brows with the um elf wow brow and then for my lips i went into the color pop lip liner in the shade bff and then i just went into the cherub liquid lipstick by lime crime and then for my gloss i wanted to go into the vamporion gloss from the evie uh lip gloss duo which is this guy right here and i obviously wanted to use the blue one so this one is the shade waterstone so yeah i just really enjoyed this like i didn't think the palette was going to be this freaking good i mean i always know that color pops palettes are going to be great but usually like again with the collab palettes they really up the quality so that's everything i used as far as my makeup goes and then as far as a reading update goes i did finish just for the summer by abby jimenez this morning i cried a couple of times there was some heavy stuff that was actually covered in that book some really sad subjects but I still gave it five stars and the reason why even though there was some really sad parts of the book um I liked it a little bit more than Happy Place but Happy Place was still great as well but I kind of like was comparing those two books the most because they were very similar in like you know that they were summer romance and all of that, but the one thing that, like, bothered me a little bit was that they never actually did what was on the cover of the book, like, walk, walk on the beach and, like, kick up the water with each other, like, that's literally the cover of the book, so you would think it would be, like, a bit of a more, like, summery kind of romance, but I still really loved it. I still fall in love with her characters, just the way that she writes her stories, and the romance is always so beautiful, like, she never loses sight of what the story is supposed to be and like basically this one is about like finding the one for you I mean that's what all, every romance is about but she like really stressed that in this but there was a lot of heavy topics um that like the characters dealt with but like I don't know I feel like maybe she should have saved it for like the next book but at the same time I still really loved it so I don't know 
it was still really good. And then, like I said, after I finished that, I wanted to jump into a thriller read. So I decided to read The Reappearance of Rebel Price by Holly Jackson. And what's so funny is that this came out on the same day as Just for the Summer. And I decided to read Just for the Summer this month so I could finish up the part of your world series for now and also because I love Abby Jimenez and I just wanted to read as many of her books as possible this month so I read three um and then this one actually came out on the same day as just for the summer and I didn't even know that until after I finished just for the summer I knew that they came, both came out in April but I didn't realize it was the same day and I decided to read them both at the same time because I also added this to my April to not April we're in May hello to my May TBR because I wasn't going to read this until June, but then I was like, I really want to read it. And so far, I am absolutely hooked. I'm on page 66 because um, I started it this afternoon. I read for like an hour and a half, so I didn't really get to read as much as I would have liked to. Um, I was hoping to get up to page 100, but I should be able to get over page 100 tonight at least I should be able to read at least like another 80 ish pages maybe so yeah but I feel like this one will take me a couple of days to read because it's like over 400 pages but I feel like I'm not gonna be able to put this down because it's just so good so so far I'm loving it so yeah that's it bye Okay, so hey there guys, I wanted to tell you guys about my makeup look for today. Um, I actually didn't even wear makeup yesterday because I think I told you guys that because I just spent the day at home. I literally just took myself to Chipotle and that's literally like all I did because I just wanted to go for a little drive. But other than that, I didn't do much of anything yesterday besides read. And I actually edited two videos, so that's good. <laughs> um, and I did some laundry and had dinner with my family, and read the entire day, and I actually ended up finishing the book that I told you guys I was going to finish, because I couldn't put it down, and I just wanted to finish it, but I will tell you guys about that very soon, so anyway, I just did like my simple everyday makeup look um, that I've been doing lately, where I wear less eyeshadow and less face makeup, because I'm still wearing eyeshadow, but I don't want to spend forever doing my makeup. So I went into the Colfi concealer in the shade Bad Badum again because this is my go-to one because it's a super easy concealer and then I set my under eyes with the House Lounge powder and then I set my face with the ColourPop Pretty Fresh powder. And then I'm pretty sure I said I was going to go into the ColourPop and Pokemon palette again. This is probably solely the palette I'm going to be using like, I, I think I said this a couple days ago, too. I'm probably going to be using this for the next week, at least, because I want to use as many shades as possible on this palette. Um, but today, I just went in with two shades. I just went into Fossil in the Crease, and then I went into Vermilion City on the lid. And then I just took Elite Four, and I put that on my inner corners, and those are the only three shades that I used. And then I just went into Brighter Days from Blend Bunny on the brow bone. And again, this palette is just performing so easily, so well. And I honestly feel like this palette is like the perfect, like super easy everyday palette. But also like you can add like such good pops of color. And it's just, I don't know, it's just such a fun palette. And I'm so excited to do more looks with it. I think I am going to use it tomorrow and probably just do a neutral look on top with like a pop of blue on the bottom because I'm thinking about wearing this jumpsuit that I just got or I might just do a neutral look with it and wear like the gold on the lid and then just put prance on the waterline is probably what I'm going to do. Um, and then for the rest of my face, I went into, um, my Milani, br well, actually, wait, hold on. I went into the ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in the shade Peach Fuzz on the waterline, and then I just went into, uh, ColourPop's Lengthening Mascara on the top and bottom lashes, duh. And then for my, uh, bronzer, I just went into the Milani bronzer in the shade Dolce, um, which is this one right here. I use it all the time. 
and it's just my favorite like go-to bronzer in the summertime, spring and summer. And then for my blush, I decided to go into one of my favorite spring blushes, which is the shade Tearing Up My Heart from the Garden Variety Collection, and it's just a really pretty everyday peach shade. And then for my highlight, I went into the RMS Beauty Highlighter in the shade Pro Seco Fizz because I felt like I needed to use this again and I just wanted like a pretty like light highlighter today something that was like good for every day so I just went in with this and I was like I do want to use it again um and then I just set my face with the do it spray and then I set my brows with the ColourPop brow wash gel and then for my lips I just went into a gloss and I just went into one of the glosses from the Pokemon Lip Trio and also this is the last gloss that I needed to use from it because I've used the two other ones already so I wanted to use this one today and it went really well with my look. So this one is the shade uh, Firestone and it's like a super peachy reddish shade and it's really really pretty. So yeah, really have been enjoying everything from the Pokemon collection so far. I think everything has performed really beautifully and I think they did a really good job with it. So, again, I wish they would have had highlighters and maybe, like, some gel, uh, cream gel liner sets. I thought those would be so much fun, but I think they did a good job with it. It's very, very cute, and the eyeshadow palette's really, really good. So, um, yeah, that's everything as far as my makeup goes, and then, like I said, as far as a reading update goes, I did finish the reappearance of Rebel Price last night, I finished it at like 2.30 in the morning because I read the first 100 pages of it um, on Thursday. And then yesterday, I read the entirety of the rest of the book. And that was like 300, over 300 pages, like 330 pages. And I was like, I'm going to, I need to finish it today. And I still ended up being able to watch at least an episode of Desperate Housewives. So it was so freaking good, you guys. Definitely a five stars for me. So I actually read two back-to-back -back five stars in a row. But also I had more five stars this month than I did last month. I think I only had like two five stars last month. And I believe that was... Um... As good as dead. What was the other one? Oh yeah, stolen air. I think those were the only two five stars I had last month. This month I have like five. Binding thirteen from Boys of Tommen, which is the first book in the series. Um, all three part of your world books from Abby Jimenez because I've just fallen in love with her writing, and Rebel Price. This book was just so good. It was so well paced. All the characters' stories were just so well put together. I mean, there was just like an explosion of like craziness at the end of the book. But honestly, like the momentum was kept up the entire time. And that's like the big deal about thrillers for me is that you want the suspense and the build up and the eventual like, um, is that even a word? Event. Yeah, eventual, uh, you know, climax to everything being revealed and everything exploding. And oh my god, it was nuts. But, and it was a little bit crazy. I was kind of laughing at some parts because I'm like, like they did everything as a family at the end. It was just so funny, like some of the, the ways you thought about it to like, because Almost like when you read these things from, like, when a murder is being committed or something, you almost kind of detach yourself, especially as, like, you know, the characters in the, in the book, you kind of, like, have this outer body experience where, like, you just kind of, your brain, like, doesn't really register what you're doing anymore, and, like, all you can do is laugh about it. Like, that's how I felt. I'm, like, it's funny how, like, the family came back together again, and then it's, like, in a way that you did not expect whatsoever. So, I was pretty shocked by the twist, actually, but after the twist happened, everything that happened after that was made sense until, like, the ultimate death of two of the characters, and I was, like, holy crap, like, I did not see, I mean, I knew one of them was gonna die, but I didn't think both of them were gonna die, 
and that was kind of crazy. So yeah, it was just really, really good. I really loved it. I highly recommend it. I think that this is Holly Jackson's best book. I loved A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, but that's still a five-star trilogy for me. It's so good. Highly recommend it. And if you do read Holly Jackson, I recommend to everyone that you just start with the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder trilogy. Don't read this first. I would say start with A Good Girl's Guide to Murder because she's such an amazing writer. She really is. And, like, I love that she kind of ties in, like, the imagery of, like, the weather sometimes. Like, if, like, a the wind is howling, like, during something, like, she'll make these, like, beautiful, um, like, things that you would think about the wind, like, the wind was whispering to itself, like, something like that. Is there a bug in my room? And it's just, I don't know, it's just so good. I love the way that she writes, but I think that this was her best written book, because the main character, like, didn't ask, like, kind of stupidly obvious questions. Like, I know in A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, it is more YA. I mean, I feel like this is YA too, but I feel like it was a little bit more mature, um, especially with the cursing. I mean, I don't have any problem with characters cursing. I could care less. But I feel like, you know, they said the F-bomb quite a few times in this book. Um, but it was still just so good and it made perfect sense as to why they were cursing. Like, nothing was, like, a throwaway line. Nothing was a stupid question. Nothing was an insignificant detail. Nothing dragged. It was just beautifully written. It was just so good. The pacing was fantastic. And you just wanted to keep on finding out what happened next. And that's, like, the same thing that I love about the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series is that usually, like, and most thrillers, like, always have some type of suspenseful line at the end of each chapter for you to keep on reading. And that's the problem with, with you know, reading a thriller is that, you know, if you start it, you're not going to be able to, to stop reading it. There is a mosquito on my fucking wall right now. Okay, sorry about that, but I needed to kill it or it would have been flying around my room all night and probably would have sucked on me and it's in when I was sleeping. So I'm like, uh, I don't want to wake up with a million, you know, mosquito bites tomorrow. <coughs> um, and then um, I think I said this before I was going to start another romance and I finally am starting my second Allie Hazelwood book because after I read Bride, I just was putting off her books so much and I'm liking this so far. I really am. I'm only on page 67 though. I'm probably going to just get up to page 100 tonight and then probably do something else because like I didn't want to read like too much today because I read like 300 pages yesterday but I'm still going to get through the first 100 pages because I'm on page 67 so that's only like another 30 pages but like I don't love the way that she writes her um, female characters, but I, I am enjoying the story of this more, but also, like, um, people say that this is, like, pretty much her best book, but also, like, a lot of people have a lot of very mixed opinions about Allie Hazelwood. Like, I feel like Emily Henry and, like, Abby Jimenez are more universally loved um, than, uh, Allie Hazelwood, but, you know, I wanted to give her another shot this month, and I've been wanting to read this book for a while, so, and I knew I wanted to read at least one more romance before this month is over, but this is probably going to be the last one that I read this month, because I actually started another book on my Kindle tonight, earlier at my boyfriend's house, and I think I'm going to read that tomorrow, um, and then go back to finishing this on Sunday night. So I think I'm just going to switch off between the two because I kind of want to do that right now. And also I kind of want to get m one more Kindle read in before the month is over. And then I also have like two fantasy books, The Encyclopedia of Fairies and Map of the Otherlands, that I hopefully will finish before this month is over. But if I finish like Map of the Otherlands on June 1st, it's not going to be like a huge deal. So... Um, but I should have, like, four days to finish both of those, which shouldn't be an issue. Because, like, I'm not hanging out till like, late. 
on Tuesday and Wednesday, so that should give me a lot of reading time on those days. Um, so yeah, so far it's okay. Um, again, I'm, I am liking it though. I am really liking all the chest details and all of that. So, so far I'm liking it. So I wouldn't say it's okay. So far I'm really liking it. So yeah, we'll see. So bye. Okay, so hey there guys, I want to tell you guys about my makeup look for today. Um, so I did work, um, but I didn't have to come in as early as they said that I was supposed to. I mean, I, I wasn't supposed to be in until 1, but they told me I could come in at 3 because it was super dead. Um, so I just worked from 3 to 8 rather than 1 to 8, which was actually much better because then it's like not as long and you don't feel like you're just like standing around doing nothing. And then... Uh, me, my mom, and my brother watched the Gaga concert on HBO Max. Well, it's just Max now, but for me, it'll always be HBO because I grew up with it. So, um, but, and we watched the Gaga concert, the Chromatica Ball, and it was just so good. She's so good. I love her so much. It was just, oh, it was so great. I've been a fan for so freaking long. I'm wearing my old, like, Alejandro shirt. I actually got rid of quite a bit of my Gaga t-shirts. I shouldn't have gotten rid of my Kelly, I don't know, I don't think I got rid of my Kelly Clarkson concert t-shirt, that would be fucking stupid if I did, I did spend money on that, I can't remember if I did or not, but when I like got rid of everything, I was like in such a blur when I got rid of this stuff, but whatever, I primed my eyes with the Anastasia eye primer, and then I used the Clarins lip oil, and then I set my eyes with the, um, Urban Decay Press Powder, and then like I said, for my eyeshadow palette, I went back into the ColourPop Pokemon palette again, because that's all I'm really going to be using. I'm also going to use it tomorrow, too. Um, so I went in with a couple of the <coughs> neutral shades. <coughs> Excuse me. Why am I dying? Why am I dying? Okay, sorry. Um, so I went into the shade Fossil in the crease. Then I darkened up the crease more with SS Ann, which is like a really beautiful blue shade. And then for the outer corners, I wanted to go into the dark brown. But honestly, I wish that this shade was a little bit darker because it didn't really create like the depth that I really wanted on the outer corners. So I actually went, went into this shade here, which is like a deep green which is called tainted but when you like deepen it up on the outer corners it kind of almost becomes like a greenish blue so it kind of worked perfectly and then for my lid I was thinking about going into this shade uh drying pan why it's called that I don't know um <laughs> I haven't watched the show in a long time but I decided to go into elite four because I tried this on my lid but it was a little bit too dark for what I was going for so I just went into the gold and that's originally what I was going to use anyway and it's such a pretty gold I really like that shade and then for the inner corners I went back into evolution again because it's like a really beautiful like baby blue and that's everything I used as far as my uh, eyeshadow goes tomorrow I'm probably going to use the pinks again and I'm going to go into like the duochrome shade um because I'm planning on wearing a pink shirt tomorrow um and then I went in from in with oh my god brighter days from blend money on the brow bone let me just drop the palette you know and then for my waterline I went into ColourPop's cream gel liner in the shade prance because I knew that's what I wanted to do is add like a bit of a pop of blue. Because I was wearing like this blue jumpsuit today that had like the same color as literally uh, this eyeliner. And you'll see in the clip what I'm wearing. I would have had my makeup on still. But I wanted to take it off just so I could sit down and watch the Gaga concert. That's like all I wanted to do when I got home today. So, I mean tonight. Oh my god. Why is this a nightmare right now for some reason the my bronzer insert fell out I don't know why oh my god I'll just fix that later that is driving me nuts so I just went into this liner 
And this is like one of their most popular liners for a reason because it's such a good liner. It's so pigmented. It's just so good. And then I went into the Essence Lash Primer. And then for my mascara, excuse me, I went into the Lancome Hypnos Drama Mascara. I actually haven't used this in quite a while, so I decided to use it today. And then I went into the Maybelline Lash Discovery on the bottom lashes. And then for my face, I primed with the Do It Spray and the e.l.f. Liquid Poreless Putty Primer. And then for my foundation and concealer, I just wanted to go into the Makeup by Mario a Surreal Skin uh, foundation in the shade 1C and the concealer in the shade 120. So I just went into both of those. And then I set my under eyes with the House Labs powder and then I set my face with the ColourPop Pretty Fresh powder. And then for my bronzer, I went into the Gucci bronzer in the shade 01. Um, I thought for a second I might have hit pan, but that is a long way to go with that. <laughs> There's so much product in that, I don't think I'll ever hit pan for quite a long time. And then blush, what did I use for blush? I forgot. Oh, I remember now. Where did I put it? Where is my blush? Oh, it's under here. Oh my god. Why is this driving me nuts? For my blush, I went into the Dior Backstage Blush in the shade 004 Coral. This is a really beautiful orangey shade. And then I set my face. It doesn't look as intimidating on the face as it does in the pan. It's really not this super poppy on your cheeks. I think the updated one that they did of this color um, is a little bit more orangey, but the original one is not really that vibrant on your cheeks. It's actually a really beautiful like peachy shade. Um, and then I set my face with the Milk Makeup Setting Spray and then I set my brows with the e.l.f. Wow Brow. And then for my lips, I just went right into, um, I wish I would have went in with a different lippy, but honestly like I didn't really have that much time. So I just went into the Merit Lipstick again. Um, I just really love this lipstick. This is a signature, signature lip in the shade and, and Times. I still don't know how the hell you say that name. And then for my gloss, I wanted to top it off with the Pokemon gloss again. So this is the Ultra Glossy Lip um, by ColourPop in the shade Thunderstone. So I wanted to use the gold shade again. So that's everything I used as far as my makeup goes. And then... As far as a reading update goes, I'm still reading Check and Mate by Ali Hazelwood, but I'm actually like pretty much halfway through at this point, maybe more so than that. Than that. I'm on page 203. I think I'm going to try and finish it tonight. I have like a little bit less than like 140 pages, but honestly, like I'm kind of breezing through this. It's not really that hard to read. So I'm going to try and finish it by like 2 a.m. tonight. That's all I'm going to do is read for the rest of the night. So I think I'll be able to finish it or possibly just finish it tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon. But I think I'll get through a decent amount tonight. So I'm going to try and finish it tonight. So, um, but I also started reading another book on my Kindle. I just kind of wanted to get one more Kindle read in for this month. And like, like I said, I usually read, um, I don't know why I can't speak. I usually get through books faster on Kindle, but also I started this like a couple of days ago and I'm loving it so far. I'm just trying to pull up the cover. So I started reading Murder Your Employer by and this is the Volume 1 McMaster's Guide to Homicide. I don't know if that means that they're supposed to be, uh, as if this is supposed to be a series then. Like, is there supposed to be a Volume 2? But I think so far this is the only one that's out. It's also a New York Times bestseller. And this is by the author Rupert Holmes. This is actually the first male author that I've actually read this year. Because, like, I haven't read any books by male authors. I've just been reading so many female authors' books. But so far, I'm enjoying this so much. And the reason why I decided to um, get this book and also why I decided to read it is because... I wanted something a little bit different. Like, I've been reading so many romances this month, and it's not like I'm stopping anytime soon. I'm still loving romances right now so much. But this is really, really funny. This is kind of like a dark comedy, 
And I think it's hilarious. I've been laughing out loud at almost every single page. And so far, it's just been so entertaining. But also, this is on Kindle Unlimited for, well, not Kindle Unlimited. It's on Kindle for $1.99 for a limited time. So I was like, $1.99, of course I'm going to get it because that's super cheap. Um, so actually, like, I've been getting, like, a few Kindle books on, like, specials lately or, like, limited time deals. But what's actually funny is that, and I'm on page 56, by the way, I don't know if I said that, but I just started it, like, two days ago, and I've been mostly reading Check and Mate. So I'm probably going to read this a lot tomorrow night, but that's why I want to read Check and Mate more tonight. Because then I'm probably just going to finish that book tomorrow night or try to. If not, I'll probably finish it Monday. But I have a lot of reading time tomorrow night, so we'll see. But um, hopefully I can finish Check and Mate tonight. I'm just trying to, like, make up for lost time this month. But also, like, again, I'm not going to pressure myself too much. But also, like, again, Check and Mate is, like, super easy to read. So it's not, like, really a big deal. Um... Uh, I didn't really get through too much of it yesterday because, like I said, I read, like, the entirety of the Rebel Price book by Holly Jackson, like, two days before that. Well, I read, like, 300 pages, but that was still, like, a lot to read in one day. So, I only read, like, 100 pages of Check and Mate yesterday, but then I just read another, like, almost 100 pages today. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go. Bye. I have work tomorrow, too, so bye. Okay, so hey there, guys. I want to tell you guys about my makeup look for today. I actually just got home from work. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I didn't work that long today, but I am pretty tired, of course. Um, so yeah, I primed my eyes with the Anastasia Eye Primer, and then I used the Clarins Lip Oil, and then I set my eyes with the Urban K Press Powder. And then, like I said, I was going to go back into the ColourPop and Pokemon palette. And like I said, I was going to use the pinks today, so I just went into these two shades mostly. Pokemon Center in the crease, and then I used Fuchsia City to define the crease. Um, I tried to use this Trainer's Path again on the outer corners, but it's just not deep enough. So, um, I had to go in with like a deeper brown, but I'll show you guys that in a minute. And then for my lid, like I said, I was going to use the shade Jelly Donut. And it's a really pretty, like, dual chromey shade. And then for the inner corners, I just went in with Gym Leader. And those are the only shades that I used from the palette. I think I'm going to use this, like, bronzy color tomorrow and use, like, the neutral shades. Because I'm just going to my boyfriend's tomorrow. So I'll just do that. Um, I think I would still have one, two, three for five more shimmers to go to use so we'll see um and then for my outer corner shade I used um this brown which is called hot chocolate from Anastasia Beverly Hills because the the other one was just not deepening up enough for me but that's why I keep single shadows near me pretty much at all times so then I can just take what whatever single shadow that I have that's like a deep brown and just use that because the other one was not working and then for my um waterline I went into the ColourPop cream gel liner in the shade charmer and then I went in with the essence lash primer and the tart tartlet tubing mascara on the top lashes and then the Maybelline lash discovery on the bottom lashes and then I primed my face with the do it spray in the e.l.f. liquid poreless putty primer and then for my face I went into the makeup forever foundation and concealer I still love this foundation it looks so good at the end of the day it's the shade of uh, the HD skin uh, foundation but they don't have either of these available anymore they like constantly discontinue their foundations and come out with new ones like every year and it kind of gets a little bit annoying I'm so glad that I snagged this when it was half price though because I love it. It's one of my favorite foundations ever in the shade 1RO2. And then for the foundation, uh, concealer, I went into 1.1N from Makeup Forever as well. And then I set my under eyes with the Pat McGrath Labs powder. And then I set my face with the uh, Urban Decay Press powder. And then for my bronzer, sorry, I have like an itch in my mouth. I went into the Pat McGrath Labs, um, what is this called again? 
Skin Fetish Divine Bronzer in the shade Naked Desire. And then for my blush, I wanted to go um, back into the ColourPop and Pokemon blush in the shade um, Metronome. It looks a, a lot pinker in the pan, but when you put it on your cheeks, it's a lot sheerer than that. And it was really pretty. I've only actually used it once, so I wanted to go into it again while I was wearing the palette. And then I set my face with the, oh wait, hold on, my highlighter. I went into the JD Glow highlighter in the shade Cold as Ice. It's such a beautiful highlight. It lasts so well, and it's just so pretty. And then I set my face with the Milk Makeup Setting Spray, and then I set my brows with the Elf Wow Brow. And then for my lips, I think Wednesday is going to be my down day because been a little bit hectic the past couple of days so I think I'll finally get a day to myself on Wednesday even though like I had an entire day to myself I think this past Thursday so and that was lovely um and then for my lips I went into the ColourPop and Belle uh lip set again and I just went into the pink lipstick and then the coinciding gloss I always forget the name of the lipstick because, like I said before, the name has already worn off of it. I think it's called Not So Odd is the lipstick. And then the, my brother's friend is supposed to be here soon. And then for the gloss, the shade is, um, the hell is this called? Bookworm. Okay, so I, that's it as far as my makeup goes. And then as far as a reading update goes, I did finish Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood this morning. I actually had read like 200 pages yesterday, so I didn't really feel like reading anymore. It was like 2.30 a.m. and I'm like, I don't feel like reading this anymore. So I just finished like the last 47 pages this morning because that's all I had left. Or I think it was like less than that. I think it was like 45 pages. And... I didn't really love it. I don't know if Allie Hazelwood's really for me. Because this is now the second book I've read from her that I'm not really that crazy about. I mean, I definitely enjoyed this book more so than, um, than, um, Bride. Because, like I've said before, I really did not like Bride. But honestly, this one wasn't really any better I mean, it was def like I said, it was better than, let me correct myself, it was better than Bride, but there was just, like, certain things about the main character I didn't really enjoy, and also, like, the end was kind of a huge letdown. Like, you think that throughout the whole book, the, because she divides it into, like, three parts of, like, the, like, parts of chess, like, the parts of the game of chess, but, like, the whole time you're looking forward to, like, the two main characters going against each other at the end of the book. And then she doesn't really, like, write that. They kind of just, you know, get together and then says, like, who beats who and that's it. Like, so I just thought that was kind of a huge letdown for me because I was kind of really looking forward to, like, how she won her game. I thought that's what it was building up to, but then it was page, like, 340, uh, and then there was none of that, and then in the epilogue, it was just, like, a bunch of news articles reporting on who won the, the world championship, which would have worked even better if she, like, wrote about, like, the play. Like, it could have just been an extra five pages in the last chapter of them playing against each other. And then I probably would have liked it a little bit more. So I gave this a 3.25 out of 5 stars. I originally was going to give it like a 3.75. It like I feel like Allie Hazelwood starts out strong. And then I kind of felt like the same pattern with her development of her characters and her character's stories. I don't end up caring about that much. I didn't even end up caring about the romance that much in this because it honestly wasn't really... 
The difference between Abby Jimenez and Emily Henry is that even though I didn't love Funny Story as much as Emily Henry's other books, the core of Emily Henry's books is still romance. Like, there's still a lot of things that the characters go through, but in the end, if it's a romance novel, it has the core has to be romance. And I just didn't really feel that that much with this book. But, like, with Abby Jimenez's books, like, her core is still romance, but she has such a beautiful way of balancing, like, the characters' stories that you end up, like, really caring about the main characters. And that's why she's still my favorite romance author as of this moment. So, it just wasn't my favorite. And people say that this is their favorite Ali Hazelwood book. But I still have Love Hypothesis and Love he Theoretically to read at some point. I'm hoping to get to Love Hypothesis sometime in the middle of next month. Because I unfortunately was not going to have time to, to read it this month. And also I didn't really want to read Back to Back Allie Hazelwood. So like I said, I've been reading Murder Your Employer by Rupert Holmes. I only got another like 15 pages in. So now I'm on page 71. Um... I, like I, I think I said this yesterday, but I would have had a lot more reading time tonight. Um, but also, like, since I had finished Check and Mate this morning, like, I didn't, didn't get that much time to read at work. Also, I didn't get a half hour break today. I only get a 15. So, I read on my break and then I read, like, 10 more pages after that and that's about it because we ended up being busy tonight. So, but so far, I'm enjoying that book so much. I think it's hilarious. I've been laughing out loud so many times. So I just needed something, like, different than fantasy, thriller, any of that. I just wanted, like, something really funny, like, but also, like, kind of like a dark comedy. And it's hysterical so far. I just wanted something that would make me laugh. Um, and then after I finish that on my Kindle, I'm finally going to read Encyclopedia of Fairies because I kind of really want to get into cozy fantasy. So this is the book that I'm going to read after that. And this will, I will probably finish before May is over. And then I'm just going to jump right into the sequel after that because these have been sitting on my shelf for so long. So I'm finally in the mood to read them. And also I'm finally reading them because I've literally included them in my March and April TBRs and I never read them. So now I'm finally read the, reading them at the end of May, which I also included in my TBR as well for this month. So yeah, that's it. Bye.